Hey everyone, it's Watts, welcome back to another tutorial. In this one, I'll be covering Element 3D in detail and giving tips on making really good looking 3D text in Element. As always, the timestamps will be given on screen and in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as soon as we come here into After Effects, you can see that I've created a composition and to that composition I've added a solid and to the solid I've added the Element 3D effect. Now what I'll do in this tutorial is that I'll create a 3D text at the start and and as we go through the settings and change them, you will see how the 3D text progresses and becomes better. The first thing we'll do is that we'll create a text, of course, and we'll just type something simple. The font you decide to choose is completely on you. I'll be choosing the Go Bold Upload font. Now I'll just put it into the center to satisfy my OCD, but you can just leave it wherever. Now I'll increase the size of the text to somewhere around 200. And then I'll be making this text invisible and in Element 3D, I can go to the custom layers and here I can select my text from the custom text and masks. Now we'll be hopping on into the scene setup. Here first things first we will click on extrude to make our text. Now the first tab you'll see is the bevel tab. I'll make the extrude 2 so our text is a little more thicker. Expand edges means how extra thickness you want to add to the text. I'll just leave it at 0. The bevel size means the roundness of the edges. I'll just leave this at 0 as well. And the bevel depth just means how how extended that bevel is. I'll just leave this at zero as well. Now in the next tab, this is bevel outline. If we enable this, it basically changes it into a 3D stroke. We won't be using this today, so I'll just disable this. Now in the material type, you can select one of the two shaders, the physical shader or the standard shader. I like to use the physical shader because in my opinion, it gives a better result. Now in the textures tab, you can add any textures you want. In the basic settings tab, you can change the color of your text here I'll be keeping it white the diffuse setting means how much that color will be affecting your text and all of these other settings are pretty self-explanatory in the reflectivity tab we can change the color of the reflection and the intensity of the reflection here you can see if I increase the intensity the text becomes a lot more metallic and shiny the next tab it says refraction if you've studied physics that just means how the light goes through different surfaces and bends in the wireframe tab, you can enable this to have a wireframe appear on your text. You can either make your text completely be just the wireframe itself, or you can have the wireframe plus the solid body of the text. I'll be disabling the wireframe. Now, the rest of these settings in the advanced tab should be pretty self-explanatory. Now that we're done with the bevel settings, we can go to the extrusion model. In this, we can change the path that we want the extrusion model to use, and we can also change the bevel from here as well. In the tessellation tab, we can can change the quality of our path or our text. I, I like to keep this at extreme for the best quality possible. In the transform tab, we can change the position and the rotation of the text. In the UV mapping tab, we can change how textures are applied to the text. In the reflect mode tab, we can change where the text receives its reflections from. And in the advanced tab, we can enable deformation and multi-object, which we will get back to in a bit. Now I'll be adding a preset texture onto this from a pack called Elite Shaders. You can use any texture pack that you want. I'll be adding the clouds blue texture. And then lastly, we can go to the environment tab over here and we can add an environment to this text. The environment that I'll be using is called Kiara One Dawn and it's a pretty nice environment that I use all the time. Now that we're done with this, we can just press OK and get back to After Effects. Okay, so now we'll be changing our settings inside of the Element 3D tab in After Effects. First of all, if we go into the group that our text is in, we can change the particle replicator settings, which means we can change the position and the rotation of our text. So I'll just move the text a little bit towards the camera and rotate it a little bit on the Y axis and the X axis. Second thing, we can go into the particle look tab and we can change the size of the particle. I'll just be leaving this at 10. If we want, we can change the size of our text in different dimensions. I will change this just a little bit. In the multi object tab, we can enable this to change the sizes and rotations of the different solid objects separately. So all of the different letters rotate separately. I'll be rotating them just slightly. For the 
this place, it means that the letters move further apart or come closer. Now let's move on to the deform tab. In this tab, we can create abnormalities in the shape of the text. In the taper tab, we can add a little bit of a different perspective to our text. I'll just be adding a little bit. In the twist tab, as the name suggests, we can twist our text. In the bend tab, I'll be keeping the bend direction 90 degrees and the bend angle 45. Now let's close out the group and let's move on to the render settings. In the render settings, we can just ignore the physical environment because we already added our environment. If we enable the shadows, that means that if there are different surfaces in our 3D world, one surface will be casting a shadow on the other if we place a light. We won't need this right now because we're creating this to be motion track. For the ambient occlusion, this creates the shadows on the text itself. I'll be using the ray traced ambient occlusion, but sometimes the ray traced ambient occlusion gives bugs. In that case, you can use the normal ambient occlusion, but with a high intensity. For the advanced options of the ambient occlusion, we can enable the FXAA setting to increase the quality of our ambient occlusion. The rest of these settings should be pretty self-explanatory. And finally, we can move on to the output drop-down menu. In this, we can increase the quality of our text. For that, we can change the multi-sampling to 32 and the super sampling to 8. And if we want, we can also enable enhanced multi-sampling. Now, the last thing that we'll be doing here is that we'll be creating a light. First of all, we'll create an ambient light that will light up the whole text. Secondly, we'll create a spotlight, which will light up a certain part of the text. Now, we'll We'll change the intensity of these lights and position them according to our liking. Now I noticed that the super sampling was making my text look a little bit weird so I decided to turn it off. Now that we've added a light to our text, it looks a lot better. Now the next thing that we can do to give our text that extra little spice is add some effects. So first of all, I'll add some glow to our main text. For that, I'll be using deep glow. I'll turn the radius to the maximum and the threshold somewhere around 85. This depends on how bright or dark your text is. So just mess with the settings until you get it right. I'll change the exposure down to somewhere around 0.2 so that it's not too much. I realize some parts of my text are a little bit too bright. So I'll change the rotation of my text Okay, so now that we've done that, we can duplicate this whole solid and we can adjust the deep glow on the bottom one. For this, I'll use the exposure of one. I'll also be increasing the threshold a little bit to give it some color. The next thing I'll do is add some shine. For this, I'll go into colorize and I'll change the colorize setting from three color gradient to none so that it uses the color of the text or glow itself. I'll use the ray length of three and I'll also change the direction of the rays to make it look a lot more interesting. Now, as you can see, our text looks really nice, but I want to make some final adjustments. For example, I want to make my text a lot more reflective and shinier. I'll go into scene setup and I'll change my texture. Okay, so I've made some changes to the text. I changed the texture and I also changed some of the settings. Now you can see that the text looks a lot better. Now the last thing that we'll do is that we'll go into the animation engine and I will teach you how you can animate the text. For this, you need to have the multi object setting in the particle look enabled. And now we can go into the animation engine. For now, I'll be disabling the duplicate text that we made and we'll be focusing on the main one. Now we can control this text animation to however our heart is Desires. So if I increase the animation here a little bit, you can see that it's coming from a certain direction. In the animation type, we can change the setting to anything that we want. For example, we can change it to radio. And that's pretty much all the basic information you need to know about the animation engine. Now we'll just animate our text to go from 100 to 0 in 2 seconds. Now to make this a little better, we can go ahead and modify the graph of this. We can easy use the keyframes. And and I'll just move this node here all the way to the left. This way our text animates pretty smoothly. Okay, so finally I'll be copying all of those settings that I just applied on the main text to the duplicate text as well. So now as you can see our text looks really nice. 
Now one final thing that we can do is we can enable motion blur on this text to make it look a lot more better. Okay guys, so that does it for this tutorial. One thing that I'd like to say is that what I made in this tutorial was nothing too special. When it comes to making these things yourself, it's all about your own creativity. Once you know your way around the plugin, it's a lot easier to put your imagination into the software and make something really special. On that note, if you learned something new, make sure to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.